I want to bring in Guy Taylor. He's the Chief of Advocacy and Communications for UNICEF in Mozambique. Guy, thank you so much for being with us. I mean, some of these images are just gut-wrenching. I mean, when you think about what's happening between the two countries right now, and you look at a place like Malawi that's already dealing with a deadly cholera outbreak, Mo Mozambique, while obviously safe, of course, in, in many parts, has dealt with insecurity in many parts of the country. Um, how does this cyclone compound the other issues that both of these countries are already dealing with right now? Well, I think it compounds them very seriously. Uh, Mozambique is facing multiple competing humanitarian crises at the same time. We have around 2 million people in need of humanitarian aid in the, in the north of the country. The country is uh, also um, fighting against a cholera outbreak uh, with around 8,500 8, uh, cases reported so far and around 1,000 cases a week, also leading a large-scale response to polio. So there are multiple competing crises, and uh, I think, you know, the, the humanitarian community in the country is definitely overstretched at the moment. You know, hearing, I mean, this, is, this breaks my heart, hearing that, you know, uh, in Mozambique specifically, obviously the, the bulk of the lives lost were in Malawi, but in Mozambique specifically, um, five members of a single family were killed. I mean, you literally are seeing images of people sort of digging through uh, the mud looking for loved ones. It's incredible. What is... What do the days ahead look like for rescue workers right now, Guy? Yeah, it is heartbreaking. I was, I was out in the villages uh, just yesterday and speaking to families who've been affected, who've literally lost everything, their homes destroyed, wading, wading through water. I think that we're still in the very early stage of the response as well. And um, the figures for the number of deaths, number of people affected may well, uh, will likely, I think at this point, uh, increase. But we already know that there are around 16,000 people who've, whose homes have been either partially or completely destroyed, more than 600 classrooms, uh, more than almost half a million acres of farmland critically destroyed. So it's a huge challenge and really a huge impact on, on lives of people who are already very, extremely vulnerable here. Yeah, so when you're, when you're talking about you know, tens of thousands of people who have been displaced across both countries, where do they go? So in Kelimani, many people, um, you know, trees fell on their homes, people who are living in adobe or mud houses or houses made of wood, those houses were completely destroyed or partially destroyed. And so they had to go and find shelter somewhere. So the government of Mozambique has set up around uh, 87 um, accommodation shelters in uh, and around Kelimani. Many of those, however, are in uh, school buildings. And that, of course, means that until people uh, are able to gain access to sustainable shelter, children aren't able to go back to school. So UNICEF has been working very closely with our UN partners, with government, with NGOs on the ground to, to respond, to deliver essential basic supplies, um, to try and get these services up and running again. But, but it really is a huge challenge at the moment and quite heartbreaking, as you say, to see the, the impact on, on people's lives. It's, it's really hard not to sort of see images like this in Mozambique, but also, you know, in Malawi as well, where the bulk of the devastation is, and not be moved to want to do something about it. I mean, what is the, what is the greatest need at this point? And, and, you know, for people who are watching this in the comfort of their living rooms in Europe or in the United States, wherever, who are moved to help, what can they do? Yeah, well, I would emphasize that we are still quite early in assessing the scale of the impact in Mozambique. And as I said, I think it's likely to, to be larger than has already been reported, given the, the, um, the magnitude of the cyclone and the scale of the destruction that, that we've seen on the ground. I think we need additional resources. UNICEF's calling for $30 million uh, to respond to uh, the impact of the cyclone and, and of the ongoing cholera outbreak in the country. As I said, the, the, the country uh, is facing multiple competing challenges. The humanitarian community is very overstretched. Um, and really, that we don't have the, the capacity and the resources we need to help these people at this moment. Guy Taylor, live for us there. Thank you so much.